If this network looks familiar to you, well, that means you were paying attention earlier, and I appreciate that. We are going to use the same topology in our named ACL labs as we did in our numbered ACL labs, just to really impress upon you the slight differences in syntax, but otherwise the operation is really the same. We still have the top to bottom rule, you know, the first match in the ACL going from top to bottom. That stops everything. It's not going to look for the best match, just a match. Um, you're going to really apply them the same way. We'll do that with a extended ACL after we work with a standard ACL for a few minutes. And one or two little gotchas you ought to know about as far as named ACLs go. But right now, let's go ahead and get started on our config. And all previous ACL configs have been removed. You can see here on router 3, I pinged those two loopbacks over on router 1. And maybe we'll add one later as well. But let's go over to router 1 right now. Right now, and there we go. And we're going to go ahead and have a look at our access list choices. And a couple things may come to mind. The first is, why would I ever want a named ACL? Uh, you know, 1 through 99 and 1300 through 99 just for the standards, wouldn't that be enough? For your average network, yes. But there are plenty of networks that actually do run up against this numeric limit. Also, you may have a naming convention at your company that you've got to go with instead of using numbers. And what I like to do in lab environments when I'm not, if I'm practicing for an exam and I'm not told, you know, hey, you have to name the ACL such and such, I like to name it that something where I can look at it and immediately say, okay, here's what it's supposed to do, you know, no telnet or something along that line. And we may do a little bit of that as well. But right now, the other thing that may come to mind is where's the option for the named ACL? Because we see a lot of numbers here couple that we've looked at, a couple that we've used, a couple of ranges, but there's nothing here that says named or that even hints at being able to give the access list a name. So we must need to do something slightly different and we do. We need to use IP access list when we're going to create a named ACL. And another thought you might have had is, well, if I'm not using numbers, how does the iOS know whether I want to write a standard one or an extended one? And as you can see, I have handily put the answer right in front of you. We have to tell it. And the top and bottom options here, extended and standard, you've got to put one of those two in. Now, we know the problem we ran into in the previous lab as far as blocking access to one of these loopbacks, uh, Network 11 specifically, and not Network 1 over there on Loopback 1 and not any future networks. And just a quick uh, review of those requirements. We want to block traffic sourced from Network 3 if it's destined for Network 11, but Router 1 should allow packets from Network 3 if intended for any other subnet, including the dreaded subnets that may be added in the future. Also, the ACL must be applied on the serial interface of Router 1. So it doesn't, the requirements didn't say anything about standard or extended. And in the previous labs, we tried a standard first, but we quickly realized that if you put that on incoming packets, packets coming into Router 1, it's going to block all traffic from 3330 because a standard ACL blocks only on or matches only on source IP addresses. And the same is true of the named lists. The rules do not change for standard and extended lists. I do want to show you the syntax, though, if we wanted to create a standard named ACL. And as you see, the first two choices we have are actually the numeric ranges. Now, if you want to, you can create a numbered access list in this configuration mode. And you'll see the config mode change in a moment in the paren as soon as I put in a word. Uh, most people do it the way I showed you earlier when we're using access list 99, and then you just follow that with your permit or your denies. But you can do it this way. We're going to use this config mode to actually create a named ACL. And I have to give it one now. So we're blocking access to network 11. So I'm just going to call it block 11. And that's it. There are no further options. And you'll notice the config in the paren, the mode changed. And it's even, even telling us it's a standard STD and then a, a, an ACL for standard named access list. So that's where we are now. Let's have a look at our options. And it's even telling us again, hey, you're configuring a standard access list. Here are your standard access list configuration commands. There are those sequence numbers again. I promise you they're coming. But right now, we're going to stick with deny and permit. And what I want to do is deny access to network 11, 
and then permit it to everything else. And we know the issue we're going to run into, but again, I just want to show you the syntax. You can see here, it looks very familiar. Then we're going to put our wildcard bits in, and then that would be it. So if I wanted to negate the implicit deny at this point, what would I do? Permit any. And that's it. Log is the only choice there. And that's it. Now I'm not going to apply it to the interface because there's really no use in doing that. We know what's going to happen. It's going to end up blocking all traffic source from network three, which is what we don't want to have happen. But I do want to show you what it's going to look like when you run show IP access list or just plain old show access list. And it's going to again tell you, hey, it's a standard list. Here's the name of it. And here are your lines. And that's it. So everything, as far as the operation goes, is the same. Almost everything is the same, except you're dropping in a named access configuration list mode. Now, what we really want to do, going back to our network, is write an extended ACL that's going to block traffic if it's sourced from 3330 and it's destined for 111110 slash 24. Because, of course, with our extended ACL, the source and the destination both have to match in order for the line to be a match. So that should allow traffic to go from network 3 to loopback 1, and then, of course, any networks that we add in the future. So let's go ahead and have a look at IP access list. Two S's in that. And we're going extended this time. And you can see, again, if you want to create your numeric list this way, you can certainly do that. And we're going to go ahead and put block 11 again. And that's it. And we got a message right away. Access list type conflicts with prior definition. Hmm. Well, that sounds a little formal. The next line tells us a named standard IP access list with this name already exists. And you go, oh, that's the problem. Access list type conflicts with prior definition. Uh, it doesn't exactly tell you exactly what's going on, but the second line certainly does. And it makes perfect sense because if we had two access lists, one standard and one extended on the router, and they were both named block 11, and we applied the access list block 11 to an interface or anywhere, uh, the router would say, well, which block 11 do you want me to use? So we need to take that ACL off before we can move forward with creating the extended one. Always a good skill to have. And can I just do no access list block 11? No, I can't. How about no IP access list block 11? Hmm, can't do that either. So how in the world am I going to get rid of this access list? Well, you're going to see that at the beginning of the very next video, and then we'll configure our extended ACL and run some tests as well.